Welcome back to this series where I am recreating graphics from the current season of Jetlag. Jetlag is a travel-based game show here on YouTube. Uh, I like it a whole lot. If you are curious about Jetlag or want to watch Jetlag, uh, links in the description, of course. But if you also just want to learn more about uh, motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve, keep watching. We started this series last episode um, with a pretty hefty video breaking down um, this really cool slot machine inspired transition. And I'm pretty sure I already know what I want to do for the next episode, which will be a little more uh, involved as well. So in this one, we're going to take it a little easy, just pull out a few different graphical elements and show off how to make them in DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully a little quicker, uh, a little more entry level, but still showing off some cool stuff that you might not know. We're going to show off this pretty neat uh, rotating text effect, this glow outline effect, and this solid drop shadow uh, sort of faux 3D effect. In fact, we're going to start um, with that one because it will expand into some of the other tools we're using. And the two text effects we're going to show off, we can even do right on the edit page without needing to jump into Fusion. So let's do that. Now, this first effect is pretty basic. You might have run into this before, but like I said, we're going to expand on it in some cool ways. But we're going to start with dragging a text plus onto our timeline. If you are unfamiliar, there is a text effect and a text plus. The text plus effect has all the power of the default text tool in the Fusion page. And you can always click this button to open it up in the Fusion page. If you want to, you know, add any more effects or something cool like a modifiers, that's really cool. Ooh, we might come back to that in a future video when we do some cool number stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick on the edit page on this timeline. And if I, you know, just type a number in here, like we're dealing with the budget, what? $1,200. I can scale up so we can sort of see more what we're going on and give some more space to work as well. Now you might think, okay, I've got this text. Let me duplicate it. And on that background one, you know, I'll change the color and then I'll come to like position and slide it down and have a cool little effect deal, right? No, you could do this, but hey, what happens if you want to, you know, change this number to something else? It looks bad. You've got to hop back and forth between that. Gross. But what we can do, if I get this back to white, is hop over to this shading tab in the text plus effect. And actually uh, to show off some stuff, I am gonna go back to effects on generators, uh, grab just a solid color background and make that maybe like a brighter light, light gray. So a little hard to see now, but we're gonna do some cool stuff. Back on our text effect, we have these shading elements. You can have up to eight of them on one text layer. And if I just go through and start enabling some of these other ones, you see the second one is this little outline. The third one is this drop shadow. The fourth one is this solid blue background. And then from here on, I think they're just like duplicate default. Um, all these settings are default. Um, but the important thing to know is that these different effects, these outline, the drop shadow, and this blue background, all those different variations are made by the same set of controls. So something like this blue border, if I come in and change this appearance to this outline as well, and then move the offset, you see, oh, now that's a blue outline, or you can pull up the thickness, do lots of other stuff. Uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed with all of this. Uh, just remember uh, two, three, and four are those defaults. You can always hop into those defaults and you know change it to look like whatever you want, or you can just start at five, enable that on. Right now you won't see anything, but it is a duplicate if you pull that offset. Okay, now we're dealing with a duplicate. So uh, I am gonna hop back to text and make this look just bold. So if we come to shading element one and make this like an, I don't know, almost slightly burnt yellow color. If we come to shading element two, uh, change this position so we start to see it poke out. Then we can change this to a much more darker, almost I don't know, burgundy-ish stuff. And if we come to that same offset control, depending on how far we push that down, you can get a little angle on it or you can have it right below it. And if you get it at the right angle, you can sort of get that exact same 3D texture. And because these are linked on the shading elements, if I change any of this, it all stays. So it's as dynamic as you want. Importantly, you can even add animation on top of this. If you like keyframe this text from one number to another or something like that, this animation style will be retained. And like I showed off, if you wanted to do something cool, like if I change this to this solid, pull down vertical, you can even pull it down a lot. So we have just this line and come down to priority, pull that to the front. Where's my rotation? Rotate that a little on Z. Oh, haha, -ha. it's rotating per letter, but I can change that to text. Whoop, pull vertical all down a lot. And then, hey, we have this like little strike through text. And if I even add to that, it stays dynamic. Lots of cool stuff you can do with shading elements. And shading elements is going to be our sort of jumping off point for this next text effect as well. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a 
a fresh text plus node for this one. We got that custom title and I'll just type in uh, what like Australia, like like jet lag. Okay. That was not meant to be an Australian accent. <laughs> but to sort of match our, our demo we're going after, if I have this kind of, you know, navy blue, I will hit that with an outline. I will make that a white outline. Ooh, I do want quite a bit darker blue there. Yeah. And then hit all of that with a black shadow. I'm gonna pull this offset back up and really pull up this softness that you just sort of feel it. Okay, we're trying to do a really cool pivot kind of barn dory swing effect. And if we come to the main layout controls, we have rotation and you'll see if I rotate along the X axis, then we'll, we've got some interesting stuff going on. The X axis being horizontal, we are rotating from the middle of this text. And all this effect really is, is rotating from a different point on this text. That point being something we call an anchor point or like a pivot point. <laughs> so to have the control we really need, I'm gonna zero this out and hop over to the transform uh, section instead, because this transform has this pivot drop down. And if you change this pivot, you will see nothing happening because we don't have uh, any other size or rotation controls, but we can sort of eyeball this or we can come to this drop down menu, turn on the fusion overlay. If I click that text plus and then right click on this text layer, I can come to template view word pivot positions by default. That is down here. So with that pivot at zero, zero, if I rotate this X axis, we can see where it is rotating from. It's no longer the middle of the text. It's where this little X is. It might be a little hard to see. Ooh, it's not word pivot position. I want it's line pivot position, is it? Oh, <laughs> it's character pivot position. Uh, on this transform controls, uh, you do have the option where you want uh, these transforms to happen at a character word or line level. For this specific effect, it doesn't specifically matter, but if we stay on characters, we need to toggle on the character uh, visibility controls. And um, that'll give us an X underneath each letter. And so if I zero out this rotation and slide this in Y, you can see those X move. And if I bring this up to the top of this image, then what will happen if I now change this X rotation? It is sort of rotating around that top position, like it's hinged at the top. So this pivot is like the hinge point for this rotation. Uh, it also applies to size or scaling controls. So if I come to size and you know scale on this Y control, you'll see it is scaling up, stretching to that point and then down. So it is the hinge point for rotation, but sort of the, the, the anchor point for this size scaling, or you can call it anchor point for all of these. I'll get rid of that because all re we really want is this rotation control. So if you were just sort of like doing your titles from scratch, uh, I would probably come to the beginning of this effect. And if I were doing this on the edit page, you know what I would do? I would come to transform. I would have this sort of back there. I would set this keyframe, come forward a little bit, have it rotate down. I'm gonna do a little wiggle. I'm not even sure if they do this in the show. I'm gonna have it come a little forward and then settle it back to that zero position. So it sort of swings back or, you know, past this point and then sort of like, whoosh, whoosh. so it's not quite, you know, you know, you know, you know what I'm doing? You might know what I'm doing, but uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, give me space to work. And then uh, on our timeline with any clip or uh, effect give, taking up space, we have this little icon here. And if I drag that, then that will automatically fade in. So you could, uh, you know, keyframe this fade, or if it's happening on a title layer, just just drag it in and it will fade in well. So now I've got this, whoosh, and you can see it comes forward a little bit. This is not looking great for one reason, and that is these keyframes are still linear. Uh, you might be able to try to handle this on the edit page, but this is a great time to press that button, load this up in the fusion page. I have this template selected. If I open up my spline viewer, click that character angle X, click this button to sort of zoom to fit those keyframes. You can see a visual representation of these keyframes I have made. So it's at back position, comes forward a little too far and then comes back. I can either select all of these keyframes or just click in this area. And if I click F, it will add some easing. So now it has a and feels a little bit better. I could come to this last keyframe, press T, maybe pull up the easing a little bit more. This is a lot, a lot of the, in this case, you know, kind of limited artistry of it, of just figuring out how you want this to feel. Oh, make sure you don't accidentally delete any letters along the way. But we've got that swing. 
uh, with that fade on the other page. Whew. Nice. And the last effect we are going to look at. I'm going to hop to my media pool. Uh, I'm going to come to effects, drag a fusion composition to my timeline, and click this button to open the fusion page. Once we're in the fusion page, we can start talking about uh, some of the cool tools we're going to use for this. Um, and to demonstrate, I'm going to grab the uh, DaVinci Resolve logo I have here and just a map since yeah, they do this a lot in maps in jet lag. But let's start with this logo. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do um, is actually uh, merge this logo over a blank background. Uh, for this, I created a background node. I press shift space to pull up the select tool. If you type in BG, you have a background. And by default, this will be just a solid black object. But if you pull down this alpha, you're sort of left with just like a blank can canvas for you to work on. And I merged our logo over that um, because if you preview any media in or logo or footage you bring in, it will bring it in at source resolution. But if you create a background, it will make that at your timeline resolution. So when you merge it over, you will see actually your graphic in full quality um, showing correctly how much space it will take up. For instance, if I grab this screenshot of just the Resolve uh, you know, UI, you can see this is a much larger image. If I merge that over the same background, you will only see a small portion of it because it is displaying it at full resolution. So you would then need to scale this down to fit it. Cool? Cool. Okay, but well, we have this Resolve logo. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another background. We will just make this one white for now, or maybe, you know, kind of like yellowy, a bright yellowy. And then uh, on this little section of our toolbar, these are some masking tools. I'm going to click this one for this polygon. Uh, and if you preview this background now, you'll see nothing. If I merge this over this uh, logo and then preview that, you'll just see the logo because we haven't uh, added anything to this polygon label yet. If I, in my viewer, just uh, start to, you know, draw around and, you know, circle this close, boom, we'll just get a blobby in that color. <laughs> and then you could always, if you uncheck solid and pull up border width, you'll just have an outline of a blobby. <laughs> but if I get rid of that, go back, get rid of that path, I can just draw along the edge of this shape. I am clicking and holding to add these easing handles. I'm just keeping it pretty rough for now too, but going around here, going around there, and boom. If I uncheck solid, pull up border width, we have a little kind of rough, kind of janky outline, but uh, we have some really important controls here with position and length. Uh, important to know, um, I could have also added a just rectangle mask, which would have masked that. I could always uncheck that, pull up border width. And once you uncheck solid on this square mask, because it is complete at this point, then you also have those position and length controls. So I could have, you know, tried to get this uh, on a rectangle, pull up uh, this corner radius to match that as well, something like that. Always an option. What's important to know on this polygon, um, if I substitute this in, is if I just get rid of all these points and start to draw more, you can have a polygon that doesn't complete into a full circle. So you can just do this line. So we are going to be completely outlining something, but if you just wanted to run along some of the edges, or if something was like off screen and you just wanted to run along a border, you could do that with polygon and that would be a pretty good tool for that job. But we, but let's just keep this a rectangle for now. If I connect that back up, um, we have some cool controls. Like I showed off this position and length. If I pull down length, you'll start to see this outline sort of shrink back along this path. And then, you know, it might actually be a little easier once it started to be pulled back to adjust this to perfectly match this. But once I pull in this length a little bit, then this position really comes into play because now I can sort of pull up this position to slide this portion of this outline around. And this portion, uh, you can even uh, type in a number here much larger to have it completely wrap around multiple times going in the same direction. This length will always be between zero and one, uh, but this position can go in, uh, you know, below zero, I think, negative five. Yeah, below zero uh, or above zero as far as you want it if you just want this to continue rotating around. So if we just want this to circle around once, um, one thing I'm gonna do, by the way, is on this border style, I'm gonna change this sort of end cap to flat so that when length is all the way down, it is completely invisible. Um, the other option here is to change this uh, level here. You can sort of use like an opacity slider. So you could always keyframe this like off for a frame then on for a frame at the beginning and end of this move. But if I just want this to circle around once, I can pull this length uh, down. I'll have it come up in just a few frames to something kind of small. 
or maybe, yeah, that, that'll be pretty quick to draw on. So maybe something like there. So it draws on and as it's drawing on, I'm also gonna keyframe this position from zero, I'll go 40 frames to one. And when I do that, you see that it doesn't change at all because that is a complete rotation. But for the last, you know, 10 or so frames of when that completes, I'm also gonna pull that length back down to zero. So if I start playing, it will draw on, orbit all the way around and then draw off. Ooh, what did I do? Ooh, my length is kind of ping pong in here. I'm gonna pull up that rectangle, open up my spline viewer, check on that length. Oh yeah, and I did something wrong here. <laughs> I don't want this length to be zero. I want, I want that length to be that higher value before it goes back down to, oh, I, I just keyframed them in the wrong order, that's all. So it starts invisible, comes on, orbits all the way around, and then sort of shrinks back as that goes. You can see we have some interesting uh, stuff here. <laughs> the position is continuing to move, but the position starts to fight this length slider. So it looks like the top of this, you know, sort of freezes in place. That doesn't look great. Let me try changing this position from going to one to negative one. So it's orbiting the other way. So it goes there, pivots around, and then yeah. So this is interesting. So it is growing from the same end always, right? So we have it starting, growing out, and then it sort of chases its tail, and then its tail catches up with itself before it comes out. So, so, so do you see what I'm talking about there? So it starts, it grows, and then it sweeps around and then shrinks back in a way that looks better. I'm gonna select both of these elements uh, preview those and click flatten for all of those just to ease them out. So we have a actually on that length. I don't know if I like that. The position I'll go, but the length I'll use that. Or maybe just all of them all together. I think there's something about that ease that I like a little more linear in this case. Ah, it's interesting, but it's quick for the demonstration. Uh, this is how you sweep around. You can always mess with these keyframes. But the important thing after this, uh, this is, you know, just like a solid color line. It also is pretty thick. I will pull that border width down a little more as well. And then after this background node, which if you preview by itself, you'll see is just this outline, we can add a nice little glow, preview that instead. We see, hey, we have this glow. You can change the glow size or the strength. Woo, don't get too crazy with it. But then you check the merge and you see, okay, we have and then back. Always more, you can mess with keyframes. I think I got a little extra wiggle in there somewhere. And don't forget, you can have this be as complicated as you wanted it to. If I did swap out this logo for this map icon, here we got a map of New England. So I'll scale this up. And if we look at this best of states here, main, I'm gonna get rid of that rectangle. Ooh, wait, <laughs> disconnect this for now. Cause then I, this is a great instance to pull up this polygon. Of course we have this crazy coast, but if I, Real quick, get along this border here. Sound effects always. This coast is kind of a mess for this kind of stuff, but if I complete that, uncheck solid, pull a border width, connect that back and forth. We can say we have this really rough outline, then I'll do some of the same, right? Uh, I'll pull length down to zero, position, key from keyframe, I'll end at, you know, let's go like 60 frames now. This length position, we are going all the way to negative one, we said. Length back down to zero, and then just a few frames, point two, few frames up, point two. We have it draw on, squiggle around, back down, uh, change that end style. And if we connect this glow back up to our merge, finally preview that, we have our state. Right? Merged over, yeah. Nice custom glow. You can change any of this after the fact, change this path, zoom in, make it as detailed as you want, change the timing or the easing on this position and length. 
a really cool, relatively subtle way to add emphasis to one individual element in your scene. I said this was going to be a quicker video. Um, I'm not sure how much quicker it'll end up being. We touched on several small things, uh, but at a pretty introductory level. So if you didn't know some of this stuff, um, this could be pretty useful and get your, your mind going. If you were familiar with this, uh, like I said, um, last video was a bit more of a doozy. Next video um, will be a little bit more involved again, I think. I think we're going to even touch on the particle system on that next one, uh, which will be pretty cool. Or if you want more, there's always, you know, tons of videos over on the channel, including videos on some of the dozens of free uh, effects and presets and templates I've made for Resolve. I have a couple paid products as well. Those are on the channel or over at sterlingsupply.co. Don't miss out on any of that stuff. So some of it, I think, is pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.